Hi everyone and welcome to another Intro to Signal Analysis video. Today's topic is time invariance. So the basic idea of time invariance is that the signal characteristics for a time invariant system do not change over time. A system behaves the same way today as it will tomorrow. If we want to look have a slightly more mathematical definition of time invariance, we can say a discrete time system is time invariant if a time shift in the input results in an identical time shift in the output. I have two flowcharts here that will help us explain that idea. So let's consider one scenario. One scenario is we take an input x of n, we pass it through the system, that gives us our output y of n. Let's imagine delaying y of n by n0 samples. That gives us y of n minus n0. Now let's think about what if we do a different thing. Instead of um, doing the delay after the system, let's do the delay before the system. So we take the input, we delay it by n0 points, and that gives us our delayed input, at which I've called xd of n. xd of n is just x of n minus n0. It's the time-shifted input. Now we run that time-shifted input through the output through the system and we get the output yd of n. If we can show that yd of n is exactly equal to y of n minus n0, then the system is time invariant. This definition can seem a little abstract uh, until we try a couple of examples, so let's do that. So the first example we will take a look at is y of n is equal to sine x of n. So that means that the, um, the output of the system is simply the sine of whatever the sequence um, at the input is. So let's go through our um, analysis scheme uh, presented on the previous slide. So um, the first thing we do, we say, okay, we're going to take x of n. If we pass it through the system, we get y of n which is just sine of x of n, because that's how the system is defined. Now suppose we delay that by n zero points, and we get y of n minus n zero, which will simply be sine of x of n minus n zero because all the system does is take, um, well, the system here takes the sine of the input, and then we're just delaying everything by n0 points. Okay, remember, we're comparing that to what would happen if we take the input and we delay it. So we do the delay step first, and that would give us xd of n, which is just x of n minus n0. And now we put that through the system and we look at what comes out. Well, what comes out is just going to be the sine of what went in, so the sine of xd. Um, well, I called this yd of n. So yd of n is just going to be the sine of the input, so the sine of xd of n, and then we can substitute in for xd of n, which is just x of n minus n0. So what we get is sine of x of n minus n0. So now we compare these two things. Here we compare yd of n to y of n minus n0. We notice they're the same. So we say since yd of n is equal to y of n minus n0, which for this system is just, they're all equal to sine of x of n minus n0, then the system is time invariant. So we've shown that it's time invariant. So let's take a look at another example um, to see if we can cement this uh, idea. 
So this next example, um, we're going to consider the system y of n is equal to n x of n. So um, the system takes the input x of n and multiplies it by n. So let's see what, what happens. So if we take x of n and we run it through the system first, um, then we get out y of n which is n, n x of n. I'm going to take that and then we're going to run it through a delay by n0 samples and we get out y of n minus n0. So now what is y of n minus n0? Well, it means we, we take n minus n0 and substitute it in here, wherever we see n. So that is going to be n minus n0, x of n minus n0. Okay, so that's the output we get if we run the signal through the system and then delay it by n0 samples. Okay, now we're going to compare that to, suppose we take the input and we delay it first. So we run it through our little delay box first. And we get x d of n, which is the delayed input, and that's equal to x of n minus n0. And then we run that through the system. And we get out, this is the input is x d of n, so we get out the output by definition is just y d of n. So the output is y d of n. And what is y d of n? y d of n, well, what does the system do? The system takes whatever the input is and multiplies it by n. So y d of n will be n times x d of n. And now I can go back over here and substitute in for what x d of n is equal to. So this will be n times x of n minus n zero. Okay, so in one case, if we run it through the system and then we delay it, we get n minus n0 times x of n minus n0. In the second case, if we take the input, delay it, and then run it through the system, we get n times x of n minus n0. So looking at those two, they're not the same. So we can say since y d of n is not equal to um, y of n minus n0, the system is not time invariant. The system is not time invariant. So in this case, um, we see that the output of these two different, whoops, the output of these two different flow charts um, is results in a different sequence, right? In one case, it's n minus n0 times x of n minus n0. In the other case, the input is delayed, but this n term um, hasn't changed at all. So the system is not time invariant. All right, now we've seen an example of a system that is not time invariant. That's this example. We've seen an example, the previous example, of a system that is time invariant. Let's take a look at one more example um, before we wrap up. Okay, so in this example, we'll take the example of the system y of n is equal to x of n minus 1 quantity squared. Okay, um, so um, this is a little harder to think about, but you're, you're basically calculating the output is by indexing into the input um, using n minus 1 uh, squared. So that's going to have some important uh, consequences for what goes on here. So let's start with our standard approach, but then we're going to see it might be helpful to run a test signal through and, and figure out what's going on. So our standard approach would say, let's take a look at x of n being processed by the system, resulting in y of n, and then being delayed. So if we do that, 
um, y of n is just this quantity, and then if we delay it, we substitute in um, n minus n0 wherever we see n, so that gets us x of n minus n0 uh, minus 1 quantity squared. Okay, um, so that's one approach. And then the other approach is we take x of n, we delay it first, and we get out x d of n, the delayed input, and then we run the delayed input through the system, and we get out um, y d of n, which is x d of, let me rewrite this, Probably fit it up here. X d of n minus one quantity squared. Okay. Um, now it's a little hard for me to compare these two and say is this equal to this. Um, that's a little hard to do. Um, so let's think about what's a little more about what's going on here. Um, so um, for for instance. Um, if we're going to calculate y of 0 for this system, y of 0 is going to be x of 0 minus 1 quantity squared. So it'll be x of 1. y of 1 is going to be x of 1 minus 1 quantity squared, so or x of 0 y of 2 is going to be equal to um, x of 2 minus 1 quantity squared. Um, so x, uh, that'll be 1 in there, so that'll be x of 1. Hmm. And y of, let's try y of minus 1 is going to be x of minus 1 minus 1 quantity squared. Right, um, so that'll be um, x of, well, 4, right? Um, so the output at, um, the output at minus 1 is going to be equal to um, the input at 4, okay, because of the way we've set this up. Um, now, the one thing that we should notice here is n minus 1 quantity squared always has to be positive. Anything squared has to be positive, right? Um, so we're never going to see the negative values, the, the values of x for n less than 0 because in the output, because this is always going to be a positive number. Um, and that was true over here, right? That was true over here. We only saw um, values of x for positive indices, not for negative indices. And that gives us a way to think about, well, hmm, what, what is going to go on here? So we can try to set up a, uh, a counterexample to show that a shift in the input does not lead uh, necessarily to a shift in the output based on that information. Um, so let's try and take a look and see what, um, what will happen. So. Um, this is our example continued. So we're still looking at y of n is e the system y of n is equal to x of n, x of n minus 1 squared. Okay, so let's consider um, input 1. Um, and that is an input that just looks like 1 at 0 and zero everywhere else. Okay, um, so what is the output uh, for this input going to look like? The output for that input um, is going to look like, well, it's only going to have a non-zero value whenever we're looking at the x at uh, zero. So let's consider where that happens. So y of 1, for instance, we know from our previous work is x of 1 minus 1 squared, or x of 0, and that will be 1. Okay, only when we're looking at um, 
when the problem is to look at the output at one, will we get um, will we get um, a one? Everywhere else is going to be zero. So y y of n in this case is going to be one at um, one and zero everywhere else. Okay, but now if we consider a second input, a second input that looks like this, let's just shift this input by one sample. So that goes in at minus one. Now, this is an input that's at minus one. Well, we're never going to see that in the output because we never look at values of a negative index here because of this square in there. So the output in this case, the output for input two is just going to be all zeros. So when we had this input, we got this output. When we had just a shifted version, all we did was shift this to the left by one point, we get all zeros out. Um, so a shifted input did not result in a shifted output. Um, so the system is not um, time invariant. Okay, um, so because a shifted input did not yield a shifted output. So we say this system is not time invariant. This is an example of using um, a counterexample to um, demonstrate that the system is not time invariant. Okay, so all you have to do is find one pair of inputs that are shifted versions of each other that don't yield shifted output outputs that are shifted versions of each other, and then you can demonstrate that the system is not time invariant. So this is a slightly different way of proving that a system is not time invariant. Now, one note here, you can't prove that a system is time invariant by just finding one pair of inputs for which it appears to be time invariant. To prove that it's time invariant, you have to go through you have to go through an analysis. You have to go through an analysis like this to prove that it is time invariant. To prove that it's not time invariant, you just have to find one set of input output pairs um, that show illustrate that it's not time invariant. Okay, so that final example was a little more complicated um, than um, was a little more complicated, um, but I think it illustrated some important points about um, how we demonstrate that a system is not time invariant. Okay, so that concludes our video on time invariance. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you want more information about the ECE 201 course um, that this video was generated for, you can check out these websites. Thanks for listening.